Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. This video is for my Physical Science 1 lab students. Today we're talking about friction. Uh, we're going to look at two types. We're going to look at static friction and kinetic friction. We're going to do that by using an inclined plane and five different surfaces. And then looking at those different surfaces, determine how that affects what's called the coefficient of friction. Um, but let me get that all set up and we'll get started. Very first thing we're gonna do is take our little wooden block. This arrow is drawn out, so we'll make sure it's going the same direction every time because the grain of the wood could have a little impact. But we set it on our scale to get our mass here. We got 33 grams. I know it's tiny and hard to see, but yeah, 32 now. 32, maybe 33 if it'll make up its mind. 32, 33 grams of mass. All right, so just showing you the setup here. Make sure you go ahead and print out your lab handout if you haven't done it already. But we're using this inclined plane. I've got it clamped onto the table, but I can raise this ramp. And as we raise it, then we can see the angle that it's creating here, this angle right down here. And so we're gonna be able to use those angles to help us measure this coefficient of friction. We got some different surfaces, some sandpaper, some cardboard, uh, some rubber, cork board, and then just a piece of wood itself right here. So what we're using first is our cardboard. So I'm gonna set it up here, take my little clamp, clamp it in place, put my block down right here. Now this very first part, we're gonna look at static friction we're going to figure out you know as i raise this incline up what at what angle does it actually begin to slide down the ramp all right so we're working right now on the cardboard trial number one i'm just gently raising this ramp up and at some point this block is going to start to slide so i'm just slowly creeping my way up right now. And so trial number one, block slid at 19 degrees, 19 degrees. So you put that down in your data table for trial one for cardboard. I'm going to gently raise this up again here. All right, trial number two, that time it slid at 18 degrees, all right, 18 degrees. And right now we're studying static friction because the static friction is keeping that block stationary but as this angle becomes larger and larger gravity's pulling with a greater downhill force that time it slid 16 degrees 16 degrees greater downhill force of gravity eventually overcomes that static friction makes the whole thing start the slide right there all right so we just did the three for cardboard Okay, get in view here, three for cardboard. Just add those three up, divide by three. That's gonna give you the average. Now I'm gonna switch over to the same paper side right here. We're gonna do the same type of thing. All right. So trial one, working on sandpaper. Just gently working my way up here. Now the sandpaper, of course, is a rougher surface than that cardboard. So it should have a larger amount of friction. And that was at 38 degrees. 38 degrees was sandpaper trial number one. All right, reset it for sandpaper number two. That time slid at 32 degrees. Got a first movement there at 32 degrees. Now we'll try one more time here on sandpaper. Thirty-eight degrees. Thirty-eight degrees. Yeah, that thirty-two degree one, I might have jostled it a little bit. That's probably why it slid and came to a stop. But that's another reason we're doing three trials so that we can get an average of all of them because we shouldn't expect to get exactly the same thing every single time but if we average them together we'll take that into account all right now we're set on to the piece of rubber here okay so we're doing rubber trial number one 
And so as I begin raising this up, this time I'm watching it real close because when it starts moving, like there, it starts off really slow. So that was about 38 and a half degrees, 38.5 degrees, we'll say. So set it up again. Just watching it closely here. Slow down. Right there, just barely creeping. At 37 degrees. Okay, 37 degrees was trial number two for the rubber. All right, one more. Trial here for rubber. Yeah, there it is, moving at 38 degrees, 38 degrees. All right, we'll turn this over. Let's do the cork board. Get it set. Put my block down. All right, so cork board trial number one. Twenty-eight degrees. Twenty-eight degrees for cork board trial one. All right, trial number two for the cork board. Work my way up here. Thirty-two degrees. Okay, Thirty-two degrees for cork board trial two, and then one more for the cork board. Thirty-two degrees again. Yeah. Right, so thirty-two degrees was the final one for cork. All right, now I'm just on to the flat, plain old wooden surface here by itself. And so as I start raising my ramp, sixteen degrees. Now you got a first movement at sixteen degrees. I'm gonna reset it. Try it for the second time. Twenty-two and a half degrees. Twenty-two and a half. And then one more test here for the wooden surface. Eighteen degrees. All right. So same way on all of those. Take each one, add your three together. Take the average. Now we're going to do this last column, this coefficient, right here in your calculator you're gonna use the tangent button on your scientific calculator. If you happen to have a graphing calculator, you're gonna make sure it's in degree mode. Um, if you need any help with that, you know, feel free to ask me. Um, but all you're gonna get is just a decimal place here. Uh, take the tangent of that average angle to give you this decimal place. Go ahead and record it um, out to like, say the hundreds place will be perfectly fine. All right, so that was static friction. Let me get this reset and we'll talk about kinetic friction. Now for measuring kinetic friction, this is going to work a little bit differently. Instead of having my block on here in the first place, what I want to do is raise my ramp up to let's say 15 degrees and I want to gently put down my block and I want to find the largest angle I can where I put down the block and the block just remains there. So it didn't happen here at 18 degrees, or at 17 degrees, or at 16 degrees, or even at 15 that time. Okay, but I'm trying to find what's the biggest angle I can set it down and just get the block to remain stationary. That as the block moves, its kinetic friction grabs it brings it to a stop, so 13 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna go back up for trial two. All right, it's moving at 14 degrees. So I'm gonna try, this time it's still moving. I'm gonna come down a little more. All right, so trial two, but cardboard stopped 
at 12 degrees. So trial one was 13 degrees, and then we got 12 degrees. Well, that time we stopped at 14. Let's see if it'll stop at 15. No. Okay, so trial three, we got the block to stop on a cardboard at 14 degrees. I'm going to switch over now to sandpaper, and we want to do the same type of thing. All right, so I'm going to start up here at a larger value. I'm going to test 25 at the beginning. Okay, put it down at 25. It doesn't go anywhere. But remember, we're trying to find the largest angle. So at 30 degrees, it didn't go anywhere. At 35 degrees, it didn't go anywhere. Now, slid off at 40. We know it stayed at 30, so let's work our way back down here. Okay, it won't stop at 39. 38 degrees. All right, so sandpaper, trial one, 38 degrees. All right, let's try it again. 37 degrees that time. Okay, so trial two stopped at 37. All right, now we're on trial three for the sandpaper. And 37 degrees for trial three also. Right. Now I'm switching over to the rubber surface. So let me clamp that one in place. And go ahead and start up here at a large angle. All right, so let's try. All right, there, no. Still want to move. Moving quite as much. We're getting there. We're getting close. There we go. 33 degrees. So rubber, trial number one, 33 degrees. I'm going to inch back up here just a little. That time, trial two, 32 degrees. And then 30 three degrees for trial three on the rubber, 33 degrees. All right, switch over to the court board. I'm gonna start about, let's say 20 degrees. Doesn't move anywhere. Scoot up a little. 30 degrees is too much. Twenty-seven is a little too much. But 25 degrees. So cork board, 25 degrees, and it didn't move. But we did get it to stop on that second try. It stopped at 27, but it moved at 28. So trial two on a cork board, 27 degrees. Now we're doing trial three. Move just a little bit there. Still moving. It wants to slide just a little bit on us. 24 degrees. So cork board, third trial, 24 degrees. And now we're back just to the plain wood. Sorry, kick to the camera stand there. All right, so back on the plain wood. I'm gonna start at, let's try 15. So 15 held, let's go up to 18. 18 does not hold. 17 does not hold, 16 does not hold, but 15 degrees did. So wood, trial number one, 15 degrees. All right, trial number two. Oop, move just a little. 13 degrees, wood, trial number two, 13 degrees. All right, and then our final trial here. On the wood, we'll just slide just a little bit. Eleven degrees. Okay. Third trial on the wood, eleven degrees. Now, do the same thing you did on the first part. Take the average of these three, add them together, divide by three. Take the tangent 
of that average angle to give you that coefficient of friction. All right, so that does it for the experiment part of this lab. Uh, you got some questions to answer there dealing with the friction. Uh, but again, yeah, main thing, static friction is when you have a stationary object like a table or a desk or your car parked on a hill and it's that static friction stopping it, holding it in place, keeping it from sliding or rolling down the hill. Kinetic friction is when you already have objects in motion. So we were simulating that by dropping the block so the block was hitting the ramp and then we were letting that static friction catch it and bring it to a stop. And on a static friction, we were finding the maximum angle where at some point you had enough gravity pulling down the hill that it overcame the static friction and everything began to slide, okay? But hopefully that made sense. Um, as always, if you need help, feel free to reach out to me and y'all have a great day.